Proverbs, Chapter 1, Wise Sayings of Solomon, A Manual for Living. These are the wise sayings of Solomon, David's son, Israel's king, written down so we'll know how to live well and right, to understand what life means and where it's going. A manual for living, for learning what's right and just and fair, to teach the inexperienced the ropes and give our young people a grasp on reality. There's something here also for seasoned men and women, still a thing or two for the experience to learn, fresh wisdom to probe and penetrate, the rhymes and reasons of wise men and women. Start with God. Start with God. The first step in learning is bowing down to God. Only fools thumb their noses at such wisdom and learning. Pay close attention, friend, to what your father tells you. Never forget what you learned at your mother's knee. Wear their counsel like flowers in your hair, like rings on your fingers. Dear friend, if bad companions tempt you, don't go along with them. If they say, let's go out and raise some hell, let's beat up some old man, mug some old woman, let's pick them clean and get them ready for their funerals, we'll load up on top quality loot, we'll haul it home by the truckload, join us for the time of your life, with us, it's share and share alike. Oh friend, don't give them a second look, don't listen to them for a minute, they're racing to a very bad end, hurrying to ruin everything they lay hands on. Nobody robs a bank with everyone watching, yet that's what these people are doing, they're doing themselves in. When you grab all you can get, that's what happens, the more you get, the less you are. Lady Wisdom Lady Wisdom goes out in the street and shouts. At the town center, she makes her speech. In the middle of the traffic, she takes her stand. At the busiest corner, she yells out, Simpletons, how long will you wallow in ignorance? Cynics, how long will you feed your cynicism? Idiots, how long will you refuse to learn? About face, I can revise your life. Look, I'm ready to pour out my spirit on you. I'm ready to tell you all I know. As it is, I've called, but you've turned a deaf ear. I've reached out to you, but you've ignored me. Since you laugh at my counsel and make a joke of my advice, how can I take you seriously? I'll turn the tables and joke about your troubles. What if the roof falls in and your whole life goes to pieces? What if catastrophe strikes and there's nothing to show for your life but rubble and ashes? You'll need me then. You'll call for me, but don't expect an answer. No matter how hard you look, you won't find me. Because you hated knowledge and had nothing to do with the fear of God. Because you wouldn't take my advice and brushed aside all my offers to train you. Well, you've made your bed. Now lie in it. You wanted your own way. Now how do you like it? Don't you see what happens, you simpletons, you idiots? Carelessness kills. Complacency is murder. First, pay attention to me, and then relax. Now you can take it easy. You're in good hands. Chapter 2. Make insight your priority. Good friend, take to heart what I'm telling you. Collect my counsels and guard them with your life. Tune your ears to the world of wisdom. Set your heart on a life of understanding. That's right. If you make insight your priority and won't take no for an answer, searching for it like a prospector panning for gold, like an adventurer on a treasure hunt, believe me, before you know it, fear of God will be yours. You'll have come upon the knowledge of God. And here's why. God gives out wisdom free. It's plain spoken in knowledge and understanding. He's a rich mind of common sense for those who live well, a personal bodyguard to the candid and sincere. He keeps his eye on all who live honestly and pays special attention to his loyally committed ones. So now you can pick out what's true and fair, Find all the good trails. Lady Wisdom will be your close friend, and Brother Knowledge your pleasant companion. Good sense will scout ahead for danger. Insight will keep an eye out for you. They'll keep you from making wrong turns or following the bad directions of those who are lost themselves and can't tell a trail from a tumbleweed. These losers who make a game of evil and throw parties to celebrate perversity, traveling paths that go nowhere, wandering in a maze of detours and dead ends. Wise friends will rescue you from the temptress. That smooth-talking seductress who's faithless to the husband she married years ago. Never give a second thought to her promises before God. Her whole way of life is doomed. Every step she takes brings her closer to hell. No one who joins her company ever comes back, ever sets foot on the path to real living. So, join the company of good men and women. Keep your feet on the tried and true paths. It's the men who walk straight who will settle this land, the women with integrity who will last here. The corrupt will lose their lives. The dishonest will be gone for good. Chapter 3 don't assume you know it all. Good friend, don't forget all I've taught you. Take to heart my commands. They'll help you live a long, long time, a long life lived full and well. Don't lose your grip on love and loyalty. Tie them around your neck. Carve their initials on your heart. Earn a reputation for living well in God's eyes and the eyes of the people. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give Him the first and the best. Your barns will burst. Your wine vats will brim over. But don't, dear friend, resent God's discipline. Don't sulk under His loving correction. It's the child He loves that God corrects. A father's delight is behind all this. The Very Tree of Life You're blessed when you meet Lady Wisdom, when you make friends with Madam Insight. 
She's worth far more than money in the bank. Her friendship is better than a big salary. Her value exceeds all the trappings of wealth. Nothing you could wish for holds a candle to her. With one hand, she gives long life. With the other, she confers recognition. Her manner is beautiful, her life wonderfully complete. She's the very tree of life to those who embrace her. Hold her tight and be blessed. With Lady Wisdom, God formed earth. With Madam Insight, he raised heaven. They knew when to signal rivers and springs to the surface, and dew to descend from the night skies. Never walk away. Dear friend, guard clear thinking and common sense with your life. Don't for a minute lose sight of them. They'll keep your soul alive and well. They'll keep you fit and attractive. You'll travel safely. You'll neither tire nor trip. You'll take afternoon naps without a worry. You'll enjoy a good night's sleep. No need to panic over alarms or surprises or predictions that doomsday is just around the corner. Because God will be right there with you. He'll keep you safe and sound. Never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. Don't tell your neighbor, maybe some other time, or try me tomorrow, when the money's right there in your pocket. Don't figure ways of taking advantage of your neighbor when he's sitting there trusting and unsuspecting. Don't walk around with a chip on your shoulder, always spoiling for a fight. Don't try to be like those who shoulder their way through life. Why be a bully? Why not, you say? Because God can't stand twisted souls. It's the straightforward who get his respect. God's curse blights the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He gives proud skeptics a cold shoulder, but if you're down on your luck, he's right there to help. Wise living gets rewarded with honor. Stupid living gets the booby prize. Chapter 4. Your life is at stake. Listen, friends, to some fatherly advice. Sit up and take notice so you'll know how to live. I'm giving you good counsel. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other. When I was a boy at my father's knee, the pride and joy of my mother, he would sit me down and drill me. Take this to heart. Do what I tell you. Live. Sell everything and buy wisdom. Forage for understanding. Don't forget one word. Don't deviate an inch. Never walk away from wisdom. She guards your life. Love her. She keeps her eye on you. Above all and before all, do this. Get wisdom. Write this at the top of your list. Get understanding. Throw your arms around her. Believe me, you won't regret it. Never let her go. She'll make your life glorious. She'll garland your life with grace. She'll festoon your days with beauty. Dear friend, take my advice. It will add years to your life. I'm writing out clear directions to Wisdom Way. I'm drawing a map to Righteous Road. I don't want you ending up in blind alleys or wasting time making wrong turns. Hold tight to good advice. Don't relax your grip. Guard it well. Your life is at stake. Don't take wicked bypass. Don't so much as set foot on that road. Stay clear of it. Give it a wide berth. Make a detour and be on your way. Evil people are restless unless they're making trouble. They can't get a good night's sleep unless they've made life miserable for somebody. Perversity is their food and drink. Violence their drug of choice. The ways of right living people glow with light. The longer they live, the brighter they shine. But the road of wrongdoing gets darker and darker. Travelers can't see a thing. They fall flat on their faces. Learn it by heart. Dear friend, listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Keep my message in plain view at all times. Concentrate. Learn it by heart. Those who discover these words live, really live, body and soul. They're bursting with health. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. Avoid careless banter, white lies, and gossip. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sideshow distractions. Watch your step, and the road will stretch out smooth before you. Look neither right nor left. Leave evil in the dust. Chapter 5. Nothing but sin and bones. Dear friend, pay close attention to this, my wisdom. Listen very closely to the way I see it. Then you'll acquire a taste for good sense. What I tell you will keep you out of trouble. The lips of a seductive woman are oh so sweet. Her soft words are oh so smooth. But it won't be long before she's gravel in your mouth, a pain in your gut, a wound in your heart. She's dancing down the primrose path to death. She's headed straight for hell and taking you with her. She hasn't a clue about real life, about who she is or where she's going. So, my friend, listen closely. Don't treat my words casually. Keep your distance from such a woman. Absolutely stay out of her neighborhood. You don't want to squander your wonderful life, to waste your precious life among the hard-hearted. Why should you allow strangers to take advantage of you? Why be exploited by those who care nothing for you? You don't want to end your life full of regrets, nothing but sin and bones, saying, Oh, why didn't I do what they told me? Why did I reject a disciplined life? Why didn't I listen to my mentors or take my teachers seriously? My life is ruined. I haven't one blessed thing to show for my life. Never take love for granted. Do you know the saying, drink from your own rain barrel, draw water from your own spring-fed well? It's true. Otherwise, you may one day come home and find your barrel empty and your well polluted. Your spring water is for you and you only, not to be passed around among strangers. 
Bless your fresh flowing fountain. Enjoy the wife you married as a young man, lovely as an angel, beautiful as a rose. Don't ever quit taking delight in her body. Never take her love for granted. Why would you trade enduring intimacies for cheap thrills with a whore, for dalliance with a promiscuous stranger? Mark well that God doesn't miss a move you make. He's aware of every step you take. The shadow of your sin will overtake you. You'll find yourself stumbling all over yourself in the dark. Death is the reward of an undisciplined life. Your foolish decisions trap you in a dead end. Chapter 6 Like a Deer from the Hunter Dear friend, if you've gone into hock with your neighbor or locked yourself into a deal with a stranger, if you've impulsively promised the shirt off your back and now find yourself shivering out in the cold, friend, don't waste a minute. Get yourself out of that mess. You're in that man's clutches. Go, put on a long face, act desperate. Don't procrastinate, there's no time to lose. Run like a deer from the hunter, fly like a bird from the trapper. A lesson from the ant. You lazy fool, look at an ant. Watch it closely, let it teach you a thing or two. Nobody has to tell it what to do. All summer it stores up food. At harvest, it stockpiles provisions. So how long are you going to laze around doing nothing? How long before you get out of bed? A nap here, a nap there, a day off here, a day off there. Sit back, take it easy. Do you know what comes next? Just this. You can look forward to a dirt poor life. Poverty, your permanent house guest. Always cooking up something nasty. Riffraff and rascals talk out of both sides of their mouths. They wink at each other, they shuffle their feet, they cross their fingers behind their backs. Their perverse minds are always cooking up something nasty, always stirring up trouble. Catastrophe is just around the corner for them, a total smash-up, their lives ruined beyond repair. Seven Things God Hates Here are six things God hates, and one more that he loathes with a passion. Eyes that are arrogant, a tongue that lies, hands that murder the innocent, a heart that hatches evil plots, feet that race down a wicked track, a mouth that lies under oath, a troublemaker in the family. Warning on Adultery Good friend, follow your father's good advice. Don't wander off from your mother's teachings. Wrap yourself in them from head to foot. Wear them like a scarf around your neck. Wherever you walk, they'll guide you. Whenever you rest, they'll guard you. When you wake up, they'll tell you what's next. For sound advice is a beacon. Good teaching is a light. Moral discipline is a life path. They'll protect you from wanton women, from the seductive talk of some temptress. Don't lustfully fantasize on her beauty, nor be taken in by her bedroom eyes. You can buy an hour with a whore for a loaf of bread but a wanton woman may well eat you alive. Can you build a fire in your lap and not burn your pants? Can you walk barefoot on hot coals and not get blisters? It's the same when you have sex with your neighbor's wife. Touch her and you'll pay for it. No excuses. Hunger is no excuse for a thief to steal. When he's caught, he has to pay it back, even if he has to put his whole house in hock. Adultery is a brainless act, soul-destroying, self-destructive. Expect a bloody nose, a black eye, and a reputation ruined for good. For jealousy detonates rage in a cheated husband. Wild for revenge, he won't make allowances. Nothing you say or pay will make it all right. Neither bribes nor reason will satisfy him. Chapter 7 Dress to Seduce Dear friend, do what I tell you. Treasure my careful instructions. Do what I say and you'll live well. My teaching is as precious as your eyesight. Guard it. Write it out on the back of your hands. Etch it on the chambers of your heart. Talk to wisdom as to a sister. Treat insight as your companion. They'll be with you to fend off the temptress, that smooth-talking, honey-tongued seductress. As I stood at the window of my house, looking out through the shutters, watching the mindless crowd stroll by, I spotted a young man without any sense arriving at the corner of the street where she lived, then turning up the path to her house. It was dusk, the evening coming on, the darkness thickening into night. Just then, a woman met him. She'd been lying in wait for him, dressed to seduce him. Brazen and brass she was, restless and roaming, never at home, walking the streets, loitering in the mall, hanging out at every corner in town. She threw her arms around him and kissed him, boldly took his arm and said, I've got all the makings for a feast. Today I made my offerings. My vows are all paid. So now I've come to find you, hoping to catch sight of your face. And here you are. I've spread fresh, clean sheets on my bed, colorful imported linens. My bed is aromatic with spices and exotic fragrances. Come, let's make love all night. Spend the night in ecstatic lovemaking. My husband's not home. He's away on business and he won't be back for a month. Soon she has him eating out of her hand, bewitched by her honeyed speech. Before you know it, he's trotting behind her, like a calf led to the butcher shop, like a stag lured into ambush and then shot with an arrow, like a bird flying into a net, not knowing that its flying life is over. So friends, listen to me. Take these words of mine most seriously. Don't fool around with a woman like that. Don't even stroll through her neighborhood. 
Countless victims come under her spell. She's the death of many a poor man. She runs a halfway house to hell, fits you out with a shroud and a coffin. Chapter 8 Lady Wisdom Calls Out Do you hear Lady Wisdom calling? Can you hear Madam Insight raising her voice? She's taken her stand at first and main, at the busiest intersection. Right in the city square where the traffic is thickest, she shouts, You! I'm talking to all you! Everyone out here on the streets! Listen, you idiots! Learn good sense! You blockheads! Shape up! Don't miss a word of this. I'm telling you how to live well. I'm telling you how to live at your best. My mouth chews and savors and relishes truth. I can't stand the taste of evil. You'll only hear true and right words from my mouth. Not one syllable will be twisted or skewed. You'll recognize this is true. You, with open minds, truth-ready minds, will see it at once. Prefer my life disciplines over chasing after money, and God knowledge over a lucrative career. For wisdom is better than all the trappings of wealth. Nothing you could wish for holds a candle to her. I am Lady Wisdom, and I live next to sanity. Knowledge and discretion live just down the street. The fear of God means hating evil, whose ways I hate with a passion. Pride and arrogance and crooked talk. Good counsel and common sense are my characteristics. I am both insight and the virtue to live it out. With my help, leaders rule, and lawmakers legislate fairly. With my help, governors govern, along with all in legitimate authority. I love those who love me. Those who look for me find me. Wealth and glory accompany me. Also, substantial honor and a good name. My benefits are worth more than a big salary, even a very big salary. The returns on me exceed any imaginable bonus. You can find me on Righteous Road. That's where I walk, at the intersection of Justice Avenue, handing out life to those who love me, filling their arms with life, armloads of life. God sovereignly made me, the first, the basic, before he did anything else. I was brought into being a long time ago, well before Earth got its start. I arrived on the scene before ocean, yes, even before springs and rivers and lakes. Before mountains were sculpted and hills took shape, I was already there, newborn. Long before God stretched out Earth's horizons and tended to the minute details of soil and weather and set sky firmly in place, I was there. When he mapped and gave borders to wild ocean, built the vast vault of heaven, and installed the fountains that fed ocean, when he drew a boundary for sea, posted a sign that said, No trespassing, and then staked out Earth's foundations, I was right there with him, making sure everything fit. Day after day I was there, with my joyful applause, always enjoying his company. Delighted with the world of things and creatures, happily celebrating the human family. So, my dear friends, listen carefully. Those who embrace these, my ways, are most blessed. Mark a life of discipline and live wisely. Don't squander your precious life. Blessed the man, blessed the woman, who listens to me. Awake and ready for me each morning, alert and responsive as I start my day's work. When you find me, you find life, real life, to say nothing of God's good pleasure. But if you wrong me, you damage your very soul. When you reject me, you're flirting with death. Chapter 9 Lady Wisdom Gives a Dinner Party Lady Wisdom has built and furnished her home. It's supported by seven hewn timbers. The banquet meal is ready to be served. Lamb roasted, wine poured out, table set with silver and flowers. Having dismissed her serving maids, Lady Wisdom goes to town, stands in a prominent place, and invites everyone within sound of her voice. Are you confused about life? Don't know what's going on? Come with me. Oh, come, have dinner with me. I've prepared a wonderful spread. Fresh baked bread, roast lamb, carefully selected wines. Leave your impoverished confusion and live. Walk up the street to a life with meaning. If you reason with an arrogant cynic, you'll get slapped in the face. Confront bad behavior and get a kick in the shins. So don't waste your time on a scoffer. All you'll get for your pains is abuse. But if you correct those who care about life, that's different. They'll love you for it. Save your breath for the wise. They'll be wiser for it. Tell good people what you know. They'll profit from it. Skilled living gets its start in the fear of God. Insight into life from knowing a holy God. It's through me, Lady Wisdom, that your life deepens and the years of your life ripen. Live wisely and wisdom will permeate your life. Mock life and life will mock you. Madam Whore calls out too. Then there's this other woman, Madam Whore. Brazen, empty-headed, frivolous. She sits on the front porch of her house on Main Street and as people walking by, minding their own business, calls out, Are you confused about life? Don't know what's going on? Steal off with me. I'll show you a good time. No one will ever know. I'll give you the time of your life. But they don't know about all the skeletons in her closet, that all her guests end up in hell. Chapter 10 The Wise Sayings of Solomon an honest life is immortal. Wise son, glad father. Stupid son, sad mother. Ill-gotten gain gets you nowhere. An honest life is immortal. God won't starve an honest soul. 
but he frustrates the appetites of the wicked. Sloth makes you poor. Diligence brings wealth. Make hay while the sun shines. That's smart. Go fishing during harvest. That's stupid. Blessings accrue on a good and honest life, but the mouth of the wicked is a dark cave of abuse. A good and honest life is a blessed memorial. A wicked life leaves a rotten stench. A wise heart takes orders. An empty head will come unglued. Honesty lives confident and carefree, but shifty is sure to be exposed. An evasive eye is a sign of trouble ahead, but an open, face-to-face -face meeting results in peace. The mouth of a good person is a deep, life-giving well, but the mouth of the wicked is a dark cave of abuse. Hatred starts fights, but love pulls a quilt over the bickering. You'll find wisdom on the lips of a person of insight, but the short-sighted needs a slap in the face. The wise accumulate knowledge, a true treasure. Know-it-alls talk too much, a sheer waste. The road to life is a disciplined life. The wealth of the rich is their bastion. The poverty of the indignant is their ruin. The wage of a good person is exuberant life. An evil person ends up with nothing but sin. The road to life is a disciplined life. Ignore correction and you're lost for good. Liars secretly hoard hatred. Fools openly spread slander. The more talk, the less truth. The wise measure their words. The speech of a good person is worth waiting for. The blabber of the wicked is worthless. The talk of a good person is rich fare for many, but chatterboxes die of an empty heart. Fear of God expands your life. God's blessing makes life rich. Nothing we do can improve on God. An empty head thinks mischief is fun, but a mindful person relishes wisdom. The nightmares of the wicked come true. What the good people desire, they get. When the storm is over, there's nothing left of the wicked. Good people, firm on their rock foundation, aren't even phased. A lazy employee will give you nothing but trouble. It's vinegar in the mouth, smoke in the eyes. The fear of God expands your life. A wicked life is a puny life. The aspirations of good people end in celebration. The ambitions of bad people crash. God is solid backing to a well-lived life, but he calls into question a shabby performance. Good people last. They can't be moved. The wicked are here today, gone tomorrow. A good person's mouth is a clear fountain of wisdom. A foul mouth is a stagnant swamp. The speech of a good person clears the air. The words of the wicked pollute it. Chapter 11 Without good direction, people lose their way. God hates cheating in the marketplace. He loves it when business is above board. The stuck up fall flat on their faces, but down to earth people stand firm. The integrity of the honest keeps them on track. The deviousness of crooks brings them to ruin. A thick bankroll is no help when life falls apart, but a principled life can stand up to the worst. Moral character makes for smooth traveling. An evil life is a hard life. Good character is the best insurance. Crooks get trapped in their sinful lust. When the wicked die, that's it. The story's over, end of hope. A good person is saved from much trouble. A bad person runs straight into it. The loose tongue of the godless spreads destruction. The common sense of the godly preserves them. When it goes well for good people, the whole town cheers. When it goes badly for bad people, the town celebrates. When right living people bless the city, it flourishes. Evil talk turns it into a ghost town in no time. Mean spirited slander is heartless. Quiet discretion accompanies good sense. A gad about gossip can't be trusted with a secret but someone of integrity won't violate a confidence. Without good direction, people lose their way. The more wise counsel you follow, the better your chances. Whoever makes deals with strangers is sure to get burned. If you keep a cool head, you'll avoid rash bargains. A woman of gentle grace gets respect, but men of rough violence grab for loot. A God-shaped life. When you're kind to others, you help yourself. When you're cruel to others, you hurt yourself. Bad work gets paid with a bad check. Good work gets solid pay. Take your stand with God's loyal community and live, or chase after phantoms of evil and die. God can't stand deceivers, but oh, how he relishes integrity. Count on this, the wicked won't get off scot-free, and God's loyal people will triumph. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful face on an empty head. The desires of good people lead straight to the best, but wicked ambition ends in angry frustration. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. Curses on those who drive a hard bargain. Blessings on all who play fair and square. The one who seeks good finds delight. The student of evil becomes evil. A life devoted to things is a dead life, a stump. 
A God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. Exploit or abuse your family and end up with a fistful of air. Common sense tells you it's a stupid way to live. A good life is a fruit-bearing tree. A violent life destroys souls. If good people barely make it, what's in store for the bad? Chapter 12 If you love learning If you love learning, you love the discipline that goes with it. How short-sighted to refuse correction. A good person basks in the delight of God, and he wants nothing to do with devious schemers. You can't find firm footing in a swamp, but life rooted in God stands firm. A hardy wife invigorates her husband, but a frigid woman is cancer in the bones. The thinking of principled people makes for justice. The plots of degenerates corrupt. The words of the wicked kill. The speech of the upright saves. Wicked people fall to pieces. There's nothing to them. The homes of good people hold together. A person who talks sense is honored. Airheads are held in contempt. Better to be ordinary and work for a living than act important and starve in the process. Good people are good to their animals. The good-hearted bad people kick and abuse them. The one who stays on the job has food on the table. The witless chase whims and fancies. What the wicked construct finally falls into ruin, while the roots of the righteous give life and more life. Wise people take advice. The gossip of bad people gets them in trouble. The conversation of good people keeps them out of it. Well-spoken words bring satisfaction. Well-done work has its own reward. Fools are headstrong and do what they like. Wise people take advice. Fools have short fuses and explode all too quickly. The prudent quietly shrug off insults. Truthful witness by a good person clears the air. But liars lay down a smoke screen of deceit. Rash language cuts and maims. But there is healing in the words of the wise. Truth lasts. Lies are here today, gone tomorrow. Evil scheming distorts the schemer. Peace planning brings joy to the planner. No evil can overwhelm a good person, but the wicked have their hands full of it. God can't stomach liars. He loves the company of those who keep their word. Prudent people don't flaunt their knowledge. Talkative fools broadcast their silliness. The diligent find freedom in their work. 